Today in Grandworks, I'm gonna review the Rode VideoMic Me cardioid microphone for an iPhone. I bought it specifically for making these Grandworks videos, but it's still within the return policy. So should I keep it or return it? Stay tuned. The Rode VideoMic Me comes with the microphone the holder, which makes this unique actually, and then the fuzzy windscreen. The microphone itself has the cardioid mic up front, which is a couple inches long, then a TRRS microphone jack, and then a standard headphone jack in the back if you wanna do pass through. This in itself is relatively unconventional, save for the dedicated microphone jack. But what makes this really unique and unique for a smartphone is the way that it clamps onto a smartphone. By default, if you just plug it into the headphone jack or ones that actually still have one, um, it'll be pretty wobbly in there. So the ingenious thing that people at Rode did is they have this thing on the back which effectively acts as a clamp. And then when that's in place, yeah, that's actually pretty darn stable. And indeed, you can put the fuzzy wind sock, I believe maybe it's called a dead cat style, but uh, that's only useful if you're outside and it's windy. Going back to this microphone jack, which is a TRRS, so said because it actually has three rings on it. Now, that is actually just totally fine when you hook it into a smartphone because all smartphones basically support that one. But the old school jacks only actually had two rings. And so if you put it into a device that's expecting a TRS, like for instance, the Zoom mic, it seems like it works. It'll say the line, but notice how no matter what happens, it doesn't actually record anything. And that's the case with quite a few of the older non-smartphone accessories that you try to plug this into. What you need is a dedicated adapter like this. Rode sells one, which is a three ring one to a two ring one. So plug that in there, plug that in here. And now you see not only is it a line in, but it's also gonna actually use it or recognize it. It's a minor issue because this is clearly aimed at smartphones, but if you are intending on using this for something other than a smartphone, you will likely need this adapter and the adapter costs about 15 bucks. Okay, I'm gonna do my noisy testing out here. This is kind of a good baseline because this is where I would mostly use the video mic. The key being that I want something that I can run and gun. I don't want to have to actually do a post-processing. I don't want to have to do something after the fact. I want to, while I'm actually working on something, and a lot of what I do is work out here in the uh, workshop, I want to be able to do on the fly and then just effectively cut stuff together without having to actually do like narration after the fact. Okay, so what I have is now two cameras running. Um, the first is my iPhone 6S Plus. That's my main driver. That's the one that the video mic pro, uh, me is gonna be attached to. Right now though, I'm gonna consider this a baseline. What it's running with is just its regular microphone on the regular video app as well, or the regular camera app doing video. So this is gonna be the default case, if you will. The next camera that I'm on is an Sony NEX5T, which is a uh, mirrorless camera and mostly intended for photography, but it does actually do 1080p video. It has dual microphones, so stereo, but historically I've noticed it's extremely echoey. Um, I also have it there because, well, it is the most omnidirectional mic I've ever seen in that it picks up everything all around and really what this environment is like is essentially noise constantly. 
what we're hearing now is there is noise behind us with the neighbors playing with their new mini bike. There are noises coming just from the, well, it's north, where uh, less than about a quarter mile away, there's a very busy road, so lots of road noise. We have planes flying overhead, we have chickens, we have various other birds, dogs bark. So if we have a cardioid mic, or like a shotgun style mic, this is, this is the, where I really want it the most. So I can focus just on me, what I'm saying, just on what I'm doing. And so we'll see how that works. Okay, so this is uh, six feet. So I'm basically six feet from the camera. Um, that's probably gonna be roughly how far I'm gonna be most of the time. Um, rarely farther than that because that's a fairly wide shot in that case and I'm probably am gonna need to do some kind of narration after the fact for that. But I would expect this to work well at six feet. Now let's just listen for a little bit on the default noise. Okay, uh, next up we will actually try with the video mic. Okay, this is the first test now um, in a noisy environment with the Rode Video Mic Me attached to my iPhone 6S Plus. Um, otherwise, it's no different. So I'm still using the camera app with the stock video one, which means it has the automatic gain correction on it. Um, I am also not doing anything that special. I did put it in airplane mode because when I first was doing some tests with this, I noticed there was a decent amount of like crackling and popping. When I went and talked to the road tech support, they indicated that it might be interference from the phone and I should put it in airplane mode to reduce that. Um, I haven't noticed any popping since I've been doing that. So that uh, did appear to solve that particular problem. See to in addition to the talking, uh, what does it sound like from a like the plosives? So, Peter Pepper picked a peck of pickled peppers, a peck of pickled peppers, Peter Pepper picked. If Peter Pepper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Pepper picked? Okay, that's that's probably the an extreme case of that. All right, small plane is actually going overhead right now, so this is a good test to see how localized it is when there's a plane going right overhead. Can you hear it on there? All right, we shall see. <laughs> I'm in the post process and I have no idea if it's gonna work. All right, now we're in the same environment, roughly the same noises outside. Uh, the only difference is I've switched from the default camera app to using Filmic Pro. The benefit of Filmic Pro is that it can turn off the automatic gain correction. So uh, that's what I did. I turned it to Vilmic Pro. There's nothing else other than it recognizing that it's an external uh, microphone and it actually has the automatic gain control turned off. So we'll see, does this sound any louder? Does it sound softer? I mean, I, I, I'm really not even sure exactly what this is gonna do at this point. Uh, the next test I will do though is to turn the gain up in there, but. Yeah, this one right now is just whatever the default gain is in Filmic Pro with automatic gain correction turned off. So, Peter Pepper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers, Peter Pepper picked. If Peter Pepper picked a peck of pepper, pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Pepper picked? And now I will pause this for a little moment to get a little bit of the ambient noise. This particular test now is, all right, iPhone 6 Plus with the same video mic, everything that's all the same hardware wise, physically in the same environment. Um, now also still using Filmic Pro, but this time in addition to having the automatic gain control turned off, I have the manual gain turned all the way up. So in theory, at least, this is gonna be notably louder with the, um, without any post-processing. Um, what I'm really curious about is, will it also increase how much background noise it picks up? So um, I will, no, first of all, 
Peter Pepper picked a pickle pickled peppers, a peck of pickled peppers, Peter Pepper picked. If Peter Pepper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Pepper picked? Okay, and now a moment of silence to hear the ambient noise. I threw the waveforms from these tests into Audacity and a few things really jump out. First, the video mic on its own in a non-boosted state is incredibly quiet. I sometimes put the background music on my videos at negative 20 dB since, well, that is so quiet. Audio at this level must be amplified in post-processing to be useful at all. So if you did want to just throw in the audio into a video with no post-processing, well, that ain't gonna happen. It's also notable to me that the levels are essentially identical just plugging it into the default camera app and then turning off automatic gain control in Filmic Pro. That suggests that maybe plugging in an external microphone disables automatic gain control in the default camera app. Maybe? That's kind of curious if so. Boosting the gain to the maximum level in Filmic Pro gets the audio much closer to being directly usable. I typically want it around negative three dB, give or take, so this does still need to be amplified by 8 dB or so, but that's not too egregious. Yeah, that's not really a bad solution at all. Compared to the two bass lines, well, <laughs> the Sony is dead on at the target gain, but man, is that a super noisy signal. I know from experience that it's very difficult to tame the background noise in that audio. The default camera app has middle of the road sound levels, but Note how the quiet parts in the waveform look substantially thicker than even the boosted video mic in Filmic Pro. That leads me to the next critical part. How well does the cardioid mic work in blocking out or minimizing the rather substantial background noise in my workshop? I went back into Audacity and this time normalized all five samples to negative 3 dB and then extracted out a representative sample of the background noise. Just looking at the waveforms, it's immediately apparent that the default iPhone microphone and the Sony microphone are both quite noisy. Technically, this shows the iPhone as being noisier than the Sony, but that's likely just an errant peak because the Sony sounds quite a bit louder and has a very apparent hiss. Still, both signals are difficult to tame with noise reduction filters since dropping them to any reasonable level tends to also drop out quite a bit from the vocal frequencies and make me sound like a robot. I had a previous video on removing the deck from a John Deere tractor that has some very good examples of that, unfortunately. What I was very happy to see was that all three of the video mic me noise levels were already essentially low enough to not really care about very much. That was also easily audible in the test too. There's no clear perceptual difference between the three samples here, so it's pretty clear that the mic is simply not recording a lot of the background noises in the first place. Thus, amplifying the signal doesn't really do a lot. Sweet. These signals are also very clean, which makes further noise reduction extremely easy if you want. I did some tests dropping another 12 dB or so off of these, and they go to being completely inaudible with no perceived difference in the vocal track. All in all, it's a pretty nice microphone. Um, in fact, if we look at it from the perspective of the noise blocking, which was really one of the main criteria I had, then it did a pretty admirable job of that significantly better than the built-in microphone on the iPhone, that's for certain. But, well, one of the big reasons that I wanted one of these microphones was for my kind of just take the shot and go with it. I didn't want to do a significant amount of post-processing after the fact. But the problem with this is that even with using the maximum gain value of Filmic Pro, it still was too quiet to use as is it would still require some amount of post-processing. And that's really not what I was going for. I wanted to be able to effectively take the, the audio out of the mic, out of the recording, and use it as is. So, well, I'll just say this. In the end, I went and also bought a Tacstar uh, directional microphone along with a Zoom H1 and both of those outperform the video mic me pretty handily. Um, so if I have to decide which one I'm gonna keep, either the Rode or the Tacstar, it's really not much of a comparison to me anymore. Now, let's be clear is that the one of the big advantages of the video mic me is that it actually attaches to the iPhone itself. 
So if you don't have a tripod with you or you really don't have any other way of having external microphones, then there's not very many other options other than this. But in my case, I do actually have another tripod. I can actually have the, or a clamp where I can put the tax star or the zoom on it. And so the ability to actually attach it to the phone itself is eh, a little bit marginal. So in the end, yeah, nice little item, but considering how quiet it still does audio, it doesn't work for me. And so, yep, I'm returning it. And as always, thanks for watching.